We need to be gentle in the application, the applying of systems. We're dealing with human beings, people who need to be loved, people who need to be encouraged. We want to capture the, the hearts and minds of the people that work with us and get them engaged in something greater than an assembly line. Hey folks, this is Colin Richards, president and founder of Lord & Richards, and once again, I'm thrilled to be with you on this episode of The Lord & Richards Show. And what makes this episode particularly exciting is we're going to get down to the nitty-gritty of how to build the yellow brick road to Oz in your business. I know that's a little dramatic drawing from the theme of The Wizard of Oz, but that's really what we're looking for. Once you as a business owner or once you as an investor have visualized the future that you want, we need to go past that and look, get our our eyes, our gaze down here to reality and say, okay, what's really going on that's going to keep me from getting here from here to Oz? And I need a yellow brick road that's going to lead me safely through that journey. And so we're going to start to talk about another element. The first is optics to really get your business going, to get your investments going. And now the the second element is structure. And as an investor, this is going to help you evaluate businesses because you're going to look at structure. Now, I'm going to define structure a little bit differently, right? A lot of times we'll say, well, it's a big business. It's got a hierarchy. It's got systems. Well, those things are necessary, but... Structure does not equal systems. Whether your business is large or small, structure goes beyond systems. Here's here's why. Systems are important, right? It's good to have a system, something in your business, in your life that's duplicatable and repeatable. If it weren't for systems, right, we'd have to think about every single little thing and we'd be making new decisions about things we'd already decided in the future or in the past. So systems, though, are important but they can cause you to go to sleep, right? To drift off into complacency, particularly as a business owner. And, and I'm, I'm targeting this series, especially towards our younger business owners, is you don't want to go to sleep at the wheel, right? That leads to disaster. Another thing that's not so good about systems, although they're necessary, is that they're really good at draining enthusiasm within your organization. If you're blessed to have built a business that has employees and everything is just a system, if everybody's just a cog in the wheel, if it's just an assembly line, there's no room for creativity and so forth, then it can begin to drain enthusiasm, drain enthusiasm. One other bad thing that we need to avoid with systems is that they can not only drain enthusiasm or cause you to go to sleep, but they can kind of be used to beat people over the head, right? The system says this, you're not with the program, right? We use that expression, get with the program. We need to be gentle in the application, the applying of systems. We're dealing with human beings, people who need to be loved, people who need to be encouraged. We want to capture the the hearts and minds of the people that work with us and get them engaged in something greater than an assembly line. So here's what I suggest. Instead of looking for a system, look for the machine you can build. You know, machines can be a lot of fun to build, right? Those of you who are auto uh, enthusiasts, some machines are just spectacular, right? We love to drive them. We like to look at them. And a a machine can be an attractive solution to the problem. It's not just a system. It's a machine built and designed to solve the problem at hand. It's the lever that's going to help you apply pressure and move the obstacle, the boulder, in the middle of the road. So here's how we do that. I'm going to speak generally, and then in our next episode, I'm going to talk a little bit more uh, using an example. So as the leader, if you're going to build the machine, the yellow brick road to get you from where you are now to Oz, you're going to need to form a team. Now, initially, that might just be a team of a couple people, right? You and your spouse, if you're building a brand new business. Or you may bring in some help. You know, not all of your help has to be full-time. Nowadays, you can build a team of professionals through Upwork and other virtual assistant platforms where people actually do engage and they get caught up in your business together with you. So it doesn't just have to be full-time workers. But you need to have a team. 
whether it's two people, three people, four people, that is going to build the yellow brick road together with you. And that road is another metaphor for the machine. So when you develop the team, as you gather people around you, first of all, make sure that you're focusing on them as team members, that they're, again, not just cogs in the wheel, that they're not just um, a part of an assembly line, but that you appreciate and value them for who they are and what they bring to the team. Questions we could ask team members that help us develop them are, who, how do I help you become successful? How do I help you become more successful? Are there some things that I can do to invest in you with my time and my abilities? What do you need to learn? That's another great question. And then once you get into an understanding of where they are and how they need to develop into the person that they can be, then provide coaching. That means you as the leader have to be constantly getting coaching yourself. It's one thing we love to do at Lord & Richards. We come alongside of our business owners and provide coaching in a specific way about getting your business financially sound and solid. And then once you have your team, a lot of times what we do is we just set a goal, right? A goal. That's a popular thing. A goal is a wishful thinking item, right? It's just wishful thinking a lot of times. We'll set arbitrary goals that don't have their basis in any kind of reality. We might just say, well, we're going to grow 20%, but there's no machine that has been built to get you to that 20% growth. Here's a much better approach why don't we begin establishing standards? You see, a standard says we're going to measure something, right? A goal is a little squishy, wishful thinking, but a standard says, you know, we're going to measure something, production or sales or profit, or in the case of investors, pre-retirees and retirees, we're going to measure, you know, the results of how well your plan is doing, primarily by whether or not you're out there doing the things that you love with the people that you love for all the reasons that you love. You see, standards are non-negotiables, right? Uh, If you enter the military, you're going to have to pass certain physical standards to get into the military. You'll have to be able to do a certain amount of things with your body and with your mind to participate in a branch of the armed forces. By the same token, within business, establish standards. And then make yourself demand a result. That's what standards do. Standards push to results. Goals, well, we might get there, we might not. It sounds good, you know, maybe we'll throw a party at the end. A standard is something where we say anything short of this result is intolerable. Make your standards non-negotiable. You must hit this. There's nothing wrong with having goals in life, but having standards greatly increases the likelihood that you're going to achieve those same levels of output and results. Well, again, if you're listening in today and you say, well, Colin, I don't have a business own, uh, a, a business that I own, or maybe you do. Either way, at Lord & Richards, I have a multi-generational team that's serving people from all walks of life and in every kind of situation, whether you're a, a professional who owns your own business, whether you work for somebody else, whether you work for the government, or whether you uh, were in the armed forces, for all of these types of unique situations, we are prepared to help you develop a plan to achieve financial independence so you can retire without worry. I would love to talk to you. My team and I would love to sit down and visit with you together. It simply starts with a phone call. 